Do you want to go from this? To something a bit more like this. Well, here we go. <laughs> For me personally, settings are going to be very, very important in a game like Z-Fest, where movement is pretty much everything. Now, for the audio, yeah, just tune it how you like it, but for controls. The sensitivity, yeah, I just have it on point two, you know, pretty much as low as possible maybe a little bit more. So for me, lower sensitivity means you're going to have more control where you're aiming, where you're shooting, controlling, recall, you know, by pulling your mouse down. But I did see a bunch of people using the max sensitivity and still do well, so it's pretty much a personal preference. So yeah, for me, sensitivity, point two. Now here we have the key binds. Yeah, we do have the classic WASD. Jump is spacebar, interact is E. The sprint is gonna be shift, crouch is usually on C, but in this game, currently, weapon punching and sliding is on the same well, yeah, key. Usually, I'm gonna have my, you know, bashing on Wii, but since sliding is on the same key, yeah, I do prefer C for that. Because I did play a lot of, you know, COD, and in COD, you do have to slide to, you know, be the fastest you can be. But this is also going to be a personal preference, and do keep in mind, sliding is very important in Z-Fest. Now, the other controls, yeah, they're not going to be... As important, just choose your personal preference, like for me, tab, enter, Q, K. So weapon punching slash sliding is going to be the most important, and I'm just gonna show you why. Then we have the video tab. In the video tab, you pretty much have everything how you seem fit, but the most important one is going to be FOE. The FOE, I do recommend cranking this shit up to 110. Because if you have it, you know, lower, I mean, 100 can work, maybe 95 can work, but I don't know why would you have it if you can have 110. The default value, I do believe it's like around 60 or 65, something like that. But that's way too close to the person, or should I say your character. Which also means you're not going to be seeing stuff around you left or right. And it's going to feel claustrophobic. So I do highly recommend changing this to 110. And in the general tab, yeah, I just have everything on yes, since well, yeah, this is just like quality of life stuff. So yeah, that's gonna do it for the set. Settings. I'm going to be talking about perks and loadouts. When you boot up Z-Fest, you're going to have the customization tab. In the customization tab, you do have your five perks, Commando, Nuker, Torpedo, Doctor, Bomb Breaker, and whatever you're going to be picking as your loadout, you're going to be spawning with said loadout. So for instance, I want to spawn with a minigun. I'm just gonna pick a minigun. For the secondary, I just want my pistol. For the melee weapon, I want my greeny slimy sword. And for the grenade, I do want my banana. But do keep in mind, every single weapon you are going to have to unlock with Z credits. Z credits are going to be displayed up here, and you get those by, you know, completing daily objectives, seasonal objectives, just playing the game, beating the game. You do get these quite, quite easily. And when you click on it and you know do you want to unlock, yeah, you just unlock it and then you can pick it, you can pick the frag. You're going to have to unlock every single weapon for every single perk. But once you unlock it, yeah, you can have it forever. Okay, now I'm just gonna quickly show you my loadouts for every single class. So for the commando, I do have the dipshit gun. I use this one a lot. It is very accurate and has a lot of ammo. For the secondary, I just use my auto pistol. Does a lot of damage, but does have low ammunition, so do use it wisely. And for the melee weapon, yeah, I just use my greeny slimy sword. And for the grenade, banana. For the nuker, I do like using the Swedish hell bomber, but do keep in mind every single weapon on the nuker is going to be good. For the secondary, I just use the Uzi because this one has a lot of ammo and is very accurate. For the melee, I just use my green slimy sword, and for the grenade, banana again. For the torpedo, I do use my GG12 
this thing is just like the AA-12, does a lot of damage, fast shooting. For the secondary, I just used the DeWalt syringe pistol, just to, you know, heal the team a little bit. For the melee, I just use my green slimy sword, and for the grenade, I just use, I don't know, an exploding kitten shrapnel device. For the doctor, we do have the long scoper, yep, this is going to be a giga good sniper rifle. But the cat bomber is also very, very good, and it also heals players. For the secondary, this one's going to be the doctor's arc rifle, because it's just like the best healing weapon in the game. For the melee, I just use the futuristic sword, because it has more damage, and for the grenade, yeah, I just use a healing grenade. And lastly, for the bone breaker, I just use the dual oozes, the secondary is going to be the double barrel, the melee is gonna be an exhaust pipe, and the grenade is gonna be the banana. Something worth mentioning as well, every single five levels you're going to be unlocking a new perk slot or as I like to call them, skills. So these are going to be my commando skills, these are going to be my nuker skills, my torpedo skills, doctor skills, and lastly, bomb breaker skills. And yep, that's going to do it for the perks and loadouts. <laughs> yeah, boy. Something that is going to be very self-explanatory is doing daily and seasonal objectives. For instance, daily objectives give you a lot of XP for your perk. They also give you stuff like Z credits which you need to unlock weapons, stuff like that. Daily objectives are also going to help you level up giga freaking fast. And if you complete all four of your daily objectives, you're also going to get a completion reward. So on top of the 4000 XP, you also also get 7000 XP on top of that. So leveling up in Z Fest is going to be quite, quite fast, which is good. Not to mention you also got stuff like seasonal objectives, which also give you a lot of XP. The gold currency, more Z credits, even more Z credits and gold currency, and you also get a completion reward. I mean, this is obviously going to be changing with new seasonal challenges. So be sure you're doing your daily and seasonal challenges for spicy XP. XP and Z credits if you need them, cause I don't. <laughs> yeah, boy. So you did hear me talk about sliding not too long ago and now I'm just gonna show you why sliding is so important. You do engage sliding by sprinting with your shift and then pressing your slide key. Now if you want to cancel the slide, yeah just press your spacebar, it's going to be acting as the roll. So sliding is going to help you with your movement, you know, dodging zeds, getting away from zeds. But the main reason you should be doing the roll and the slide is because it gives you a little bit of movement speed. So you don't have to slide and roll all the time. But if you do, yep, you're just gonna get places faster. Because like I said, yep, it gives you a speed increase when you do the roll. The main reason I have my slide on the C key is because... Well, yeah, I can quickly tap it and press spacebar at the exact same time. Which is pretty much just gonna be doing the roll. And you can also use it when killing some zeds, you know, just like roll away from them. Stuff like that. So the more you play, the more you're just gonna... Well, yeah, get used to it. Something that is very cool with sliding as well, yep, you can actually slide into Zeds and push them away. Now, it does feel like a little bit inconsistent when you do that, but if you just, like, see one, yeah, you can just throw him away. Something worth mentioning as well, if you're going to be playing the nuker, and do keep in mind every single weapon for the nuker is going to be doing exactly the same, if you shoot on the floor, yeah, you're just gonna get launched a little bit backwards, but if you jump and shoot, yeah, you're gonna get launched further. And what does that mean? Yep, you can get out of situations very, very fast. See, look, this is me not jumping, and this is me jumping. You can also, you know, scale platforms, you know, just like get propelled very far away. So yeah, do keep that in mind when you're gonna be playing your nuker perk. Very, very useful tip. I'm just gonna say this, Z-Fest has some of the best movement I've ever freaking seen, it's just so satisfying, jumping, rolling, sliding, propelling yourself upwards, it's just so cool. And I do believe that's pretty much all I gotta say for the movement, I mean the more you play, the more you're gonna get used to it and the funner the game becomes to play. <laughs> yeah, boy. 
So now we're going to be talking about pugs. This is going to be your trader pod. You go to it, you press E, and you're going to be greeted with a lot of stuff. Now in pugs, you can change your perk for 700 credits. Or you can just stick to your perk which you're playing and, well, yeah, buy some stuff. Now, for a new player, a lot of this is not going to make much sense. But I'm just gonna say this. Get some armor, get some Z-Cola, a med kit, refill your ammo. And if you have money left over, yeah, either get a void creator or an ammo generator. The ammo generator is going to be very important on multiplayer. Because you can buy it, place it down, and people can get ammunition from it. The more people playing in your lobby the more charges it's gonna have now if you filled everything up got all your personal treatments and you don't have enough money I do recommend selling your grenades. They're not that good. So by selling stuff, yeah, you can still get it back, you know, for 20 for the freaking banana. But if you sold it, yeah, you can get another ammo generator and, well, kaboom. Now you have two of them. It is a very basic system, but I did see a fair share of players actually getting confused so might as well include it in this whole video on top of that when you're done yeah just press f1 both in solo and multiplayer that's going to just start the next wave yeah, boy. I'm just going to touch on this for a little bit yeah you do see these cameras around every single map and if you destroy them yeah they're going to be multiplying your score and giving you well yeah more xp for your perk. So if you see a camera, yeah, just destroy it. I mean, it's also in the Steam achievements. Sometimes it's in the dailies and it does give you XP. So it is worth killing or should I say destroying if you see it. Yeah, boy. Upgrading weapons to level 5 is going to be essential in Z-Fest. As you can see here, this pistol is near enough ready to be upgraded. I just need a couple more kills. All weapons are going to go up to level 5, and the more you level them up, the less recoil they're gonna have. They're going to reload faster, and they're going to be doing more damage. It is absolutely necessary to upgrade weapons, because you're going to be... Well, yeah, overall, stronger. Yep, here we have some Zeds, just gonna be shooting them, you know, like normal, and you're going to see a pop-up, upgrade available. When you're gonna see that, yep, you better upgrade it at Pugs. Now here at Pugs, yeah, you just click on it, click upgrade, and... Well, yeah, there you go. It's now level 2. It's now gonna have less recoil, it's gonna shoot faster, and also reload faster. Yeah, boy. Now we have some tips and tricks. The first one, I'm just gonna be showing you what is the safest way you can heal your teammates. If you got a void creator, yeah, you can just like plop it down on a player that is dead and yeah, you're pretty much going to be undisturbed. And when the player gets up, yeah, he can just chill underneath the void creator and heal up and then he can move and go to his own position. Okay, now we're going to be talking about the Acid Puke Master, which is going to be this Z right here, the big one. Now, if it's not obvious enough, you do get like a giant shoot me on his fuel tank, signifying that's going to be his weak point. So he is going to be pretty much immune to your explosive damage, but, well, you can just shoot him in the fuel tank. And the more you keep him on the map, the faster he becomes. So do kill him as fast as possible. And if you get puked, yeah, your screen is going to turn green. You're going to be taking, you know, a little bit of damage, but you can neglect that by taking a shower or jumping in the water. The easiest way to kill the Acid Puke Master is to... Will I just go towards him with a melee weapon and just kill him that way? Or alternatively, you can wait for his swing and just like shoot the fuel tank like I showed right now. But you do have to take into account that you may take some damage from the explosion. Next up, some weapons are quite expensive to reload, but if you're playing multiplayer on like four people, it's going to be oftentimes cheaper to get an ammo generator or two, especially with a pugs discount, the level 20 skill. You can just buy two ammo generators and you're going to have more money left over. It's not going to be always the case, but oftentimes it is cheaper and not to mention, well, yeah, other players can get ammo as well. I mean, there's nothing worse than running out of ammunition. Okay, now I'm just gonna be showing you some tips and tricks for objective mode. If you're placing any part, yeah, just whip out your melee weapon and just chop everything up. 
The melee weapons here, they do have a surprising freaking reach, so you can kill things behind you or... Will I just left or right of you? It is better just whacking stuff than just... Will I standing there and taking the damage? I did hear a lot of people complaining that they can't will I do these objectives because the Zeds don't want to go up the platform. They just do this. And well, all the Zeds get stuck right below. But the trick to doing these objectives is to kite them away. Like up here and then just go past them and go to the ramp. And just slowly kite them as soon as they start coming up. You just go in and to the corner. So this is going to be the other objective where you just have to kite the Zeds on top of the blender. I mean, you just kite them to the ramp. And then just, well, yeah, let them fall in. As easy as that. You don't just, like, stand on it and just, like, wait for the Zeds to come up because they're not. You just have to go down, go fetch them, kite them around, get them up the stairs... And just slowly throw them in. Yep, these objectives are pretty much the easiest to complete. You just have to understand well, yeah, how the Zeds are walking around. Oh, and since I showed you this puke dude beforehand, yep, that's what you can do to him. Go towards him and chop him up. You did also hear me talk about the Void Creator quite a lot. And that's because, in my personal opinion, it is the best traps and goody alongside the ammo generator. So for objective mode, I do highly, highly recommend getting this for every wave. And you're just gonna see why. Well then, here we have the slow-mo friend objective. Just in case you guys didn't know, you can punch him and he goes faster. Now, you can't just punch him repeatedly because that's not going to, like, speed him up. But as soon as he slows down... Yeah, you can just punch him again and he is gonna go a little bit faster for a couple of seconds. So the escort objective is going to be ending in him hacking a console and this is where the void creator comes into play. You place it down right next to him and Zeds are not going to get close to him anymore. I mean, they can try, but they're gonna get sucked in. See, look, he's just like so happy jumping around, not taking any damage. And yep, that's how you beat well, yeah, pretty much every single objective. You just have a void creator to make your life easier. You don't need it, but it definitely helps. Something that only the Bone Breaker has is his melee weapons can spin around, doing a massive amount of damage, and it pretty much acts just like a... Will have pocket void creator when you're doing objectives because you can be placing stuff down and you can just like spin around and everything is gonna be dying. Another cool trick when you right click with your will have melee weapon, you can actually sprint and you're going to be covering more distance. Whereas if you just will have right click and just like slowly walk, yeah, you're not going to be covering much distance at all. So yeah, right click and just start freaking sprinting because you're going to be killing way more Zeds. Maybe some of you already knew these or all of these. I probably left out a couple of tips and tricks, but I mean, the more you play, you're probably going to figure them out by yourself. So yeah, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a like, subscribe, and see you guys in the next episode. Adios.